All right, so listen to me very closely. Hawlucha may just be the most clutch Pokemon of all time. If you've never been afraid of this thing before, I urge you to hide your children and hide your wives because this thing is coming for you and my dude is absolutely slept on. Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Hey, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I'm on my way to 300K this year and it would mean a lot if you could help out. YouTuber stuff aside, I've got myself a team full of power, but also going up against a team that is extremely scary. So let's just go ahead and get into the match here. Now they are gonna end up leading off with the meanest bull cut of all time, the Ting Lu, as I decide to lead off with just a pointy little guy. Now, this is quite the mismatch. Obviously, I have no business going up against legendary ass Ting Lu, uh, as Stig was pretty much just here to set up the electric terrain. My team takes advantage of that. And I figure while I'm here, I might as well just kind of spray some Legos on their side of the field. Entry Hazard is going to be nice to try to potentially break some Focus Sashes. I expect him to set up the Stealth Rock turn one anyway, as that's exactly what happened. So I know that Pink Urchin should be able to take at least one Earthquake from this thing. And I kind of want to save it in the back pocket to potentially set up some electric terrain later. So for now, I got up a nice little layer of spikes and we're feeling good and sharp. On second hand, putting this thing in your pocket, probably not the best idea. So I just figure I'm gonna stay in here, go for another layer of spikes. The earthquake does happen and you know, it does definitely hurt, but as long as you know this thing stays alive, I can send it out at any time, get back up that terrain. And there's a couple Pokemon on my team that like to use it. So I get up two layers of spikes, which are feeling nice. And at this point I'm thinking, okay, you know, another earthquake is definitely gonna happen here. I'm gonna switch right into Halucha. Now, Halucha is one of the members of the team that enjoys the yellow stuff on the field, and that is because of the item this thing is carrying, which is the electric seed. So I come in, I touch the ground, which is going to pop my electric cherry, and <laughs> that is going to give me not only a nice little defense boost, but also activate Halucha's unburdened ability, and now my speed is doubled with that nice little plus one in defense. So he's going to end up going for spikes himself, and now there's all sorts of shit on my side of the field that I got to deal with. However, I'm in a pretty good spot here to hit this thing with a nice little super effective high jump kick. Um, I'm considering going for the swords dance. I know it's not likely that high jump kick kills here, but I also know that this thing can't really hit me with much. So I go for the high jump kick. Luckily, do not miss. Big old bull target is easy to hit. However, it actually ends up going for the whirlwind, and that is extremely bad. I forget that these things generally do carry the whirlwind um, because they basically they're here to set up hazards and then just kind of stir the pot a little bit. So. Phases me out right back into the worst possible Pokemon to come in. And that's fucking the goddamn Pink Urchin again. It, literally anything else coming in here would have been able to outspeed and kill the Tinglu. Except for you, Pink Urchin. But yeah, so that is quite unfortunate. Not only because now I just have to lose Stickler, but also because Alucha won't have the benefit of that Electric Seed or Unburdened. So I do let this thing take me out with an Earthquake. I probably could have gone right back into the Halucha, But at this point, I just decided to cut my losses and just call it a day on Pink Urchin. So that is fine. Luckily with the critical hit on the high jump kick I did get, I can chip this thing and just basically knock it out with anything I have. And that is gonna be the Rusty Spoon. I figure I might as well try to get new ass Cyborg Verizion going because it's not the best Pokemon, but he's definitely fun to use. So I can come in, I can activate my Quark Drive, which is gonna give me a nice little attack boost. And honestly, if you're faster than things, uh, you can have a pretty solid time with, with the Iron Leaves. However, I probably should be trying to get plus speed on the Quark Drive, but regardless, I can go ahead and punch this thing right in the face a couple of times with the close combat, and down goes uh, Stanley Cup over here. So that's pretty solid. Don't have to worry about that annoying asshole anymore. And old Salad Fingers over here is able to do something. So that feels good. Down goes the Ting Lu. Annoying ass Pokemon do not have to deal with it. However, now they get a free switch into whatever they like. So they decide to go into Bisharp. Now this dude's working with both Bisharp and the evolved form, King Gambit. So little brother comes in, and what I don't want to do is deal with the Sucker Punch. I am definitely going to die to that, and my Terra is not going to help me either. So I have to switch into the one thing that wants to deal with that, and that is going to be the digital ass Donphan. So if he goes for Sucker Punch here, I can basically come in for free. Now this is also a Pokemon that likes to have the electric terrain up, because they do have the Quark Drive as well. So I send this thing out, he just basically sensory overload here. Imagine getting sent out, you get activate Quark Drive because it's electric on the ground. And then there's spikes, and then there's stealth rock. There's just so much going on, and it's my bad, bro. But he does go for the sucker punch here. And although Don Fan is overwhelmed as shit, he's now in here relatively safely. So he's feeling good. And at this point, I know that I can go for a pretty strong earthquake, especially with the attack boost from the quark drive. However, I decide to go for the rapid spin, and that's because there's too much stuff over here. And I say, hey, you take that stuff back. So I spin it back over, and uh, I also get a nice little speed boost in the process there. So. Bisharp actually ends up staying in to my surprise. I didn't think this thing had a whole lot to do to me. And it turns out it's actually going to go for the Swords Dance. So his name is Bisharp. Now he's double sharp as shit because now he's got a whole bunch of swords. 
and that's yeah, a little bit scary. But Tesla should be able to still take a Sucker Punch here. I'm actually, I believe, faster after the speed boost from the Rapid Spin. Uh, so now I just basically have to go for the Earthquake here. I do lose the Electric Terrain, and it's not going to be up anymore because of the fact that Pink Urchin got absolutely hoed. So he does go for the Sucker Punch here. Luckily, I'm barely able to live that with 31. That could have been a pretty big problem if I wasn't able to live that. But luckily, this thing is an absolute beast and powers through. Now, that's two down, but he does have some very scary Pokemon left. And the main one we're worried about is going to be the Walking Wake. New ass Suicune is everywhere right now. You truly cannot get into a battle without this thing. And it is an absolute menace. So, Dinosaur, Raptor, T-Rex, fucking Suicune comes in. Looking goofy as hell, but scary. And I don't have anything that wants to switch into it. So, I just stay in. And I'm kind of fine with this thing dying. I was able to take care of the Bisharp while also getting rid of the hazard, so I'm proud of you, Don fam. So that's fine. Now I gotta figure out how to beat this damn thing. And the only real answer I have is gonna be Focus Sash Zorark. So, unfortunately, unable to take advantage of my amazing normal and ghost typing, I'm gonna come in disguised as the Iron Leaves, which is kind of a dead giveaway because now I'm at full HP and he knows that I'm not, but. Uh, I know that I can live at least one attack. I actually do live it with 19. The Hydro Steam isn't going to be able to knock me out, or at least knock me to my Focus Sash. Um, the Illusion wears off, and now I just basically yell at this thing, which is not quite going to be able to do enough to kill it either. So, kind of in a little bit of a pickle here, but what at least I was able to do is put it into range. I was able to chip it enough to where now I'm feeling like Hollutrix should be able to do it. And luckily, there is not harsh sunlight, because if there was sunlight, Hydro Steam definitely kills Hollucha, but I'm feeling like if... Zorak was able to take at least one of them. Halucha can definitely soak up a little bit of hot water, never hurt nobody. So, I come in, I go for the acrobatics here, and luckily for me, he does not go for any Terra, just goes right for the Hydro, and I'm able to live that with 26, which is very scary, but we expect to live. The acrobatics takes care of it, and that is an absolute beast of a Mon to see down. So now, they are down to three Pokemon, and the main problem is this here washing machine. Now, of course, being weak to electric, I kind of have to use my Terra at this point. What I can do is, I actually end up going for the Roost. I probably actually didn't need to Terra on this turn, but I go, go ahead and turn myself into Fighting so I'm not weak to electric. But also, I go for the Roost, so on this turn, I'm not weak to electric anyway. But I have a Fist on my head, and it's an Intimidation tactic at this point. Halucha is going to absolutely give it to him. So I go for the Roost. Now, with the Roost, I should be able to get above half, and then if he goes for a Volt Switch... I know that I can definitely live it. Thunderbolt's another story. However, he does go for the Volt Switch. I'm able to live it with 39, and that is absolutely amazing. Now, Halucha is positioned to the point where I might be able to turn this match around if I can set up. Main thing I need to do is get through that washing machine, because at full health, it's still an issue. But I'll tell you what can be even more of an issue is freaking Salt Gorilla Garganackle over here. This is a Pokemon that, especially if they still have their Terra in their pocket, can be extremely scary and hard to predict. So. They actually end up going for the Protect there. That is extremely clutch because I, instead, just take a nice little break on the ground and go for the Roost, which is going to bring me, again, back over half. Now, going against this Mon, it, you feel relatively safe because it's not going to have anything that can knock me out at this range. So now I'm feeling like I could actually put myself in a spot where I can go for the Swords Dance, uh, try to boost myself, and, and figure out if I can get enough damage to either knock this out and the Washing Machine and pull out a nice little Halucha Clutch. So. He's actually going to end up going for the Protect again. Now, the reason for that is because he's actually expecting me to go for the High Jump Kick. And if I go for the High Jump Kick on the Protect, I actually take Crash Damage. And that is, you're going to have a bad time. So, I am well aware of this fact. And that is why I decided to dance with the Swords. And now my attack is looking strong. So, I also know he can't go for the third Protect. He protected twice in a row. And I figure if there's any time for him to use his Terra, it's about now. So... Instead of going for the high jump kick, I decide to go for the acrobatics. I do not have my item, so the power is doubled. And we still get that stab from the flying. So, he actually does go for the Terra, turns into the water type, and acrobatics is going to do enough to be a nice little two-hit KO. I'm still scared to go for high jump kick and risk the miss anyway, knowing that uh, pretty much both of those hits are going to be two-hit KO if they do Terra. So, luckily, we time the Terra pretty nicely, and uh, he actually does end up going for the Salt Cure. Now, Salt Cure... It does kind of suck, and it's going to turn me into bird jerky, but I do have the roost, and I should be able to have the longevity there, in the, at least the upper hand. So, I'm thinking either I go for the roost, I finish this thing off with an acrobatics, regardless, I should be able to still outspeed whatever comes in next. Acrobatics does take care of the Garganackle, and that could have gone extremely bad if I tried to high jump kick it. I, it, I didn't see the first protect coming, but knowing that that strategy was there, it, basically, it, was, it worked out. So... 
Uh, now they go into the free switch, they decide to bring back in the Rotom, and this thing, now that I have my Swords Dance, I'm feeling pretty confident that a Terra Stab boosted Fighting High Jump Kick should be able to kill, especially after the Swords Dance. So, I know that I'm faster because we saw this thing wasn't scarfed earlier, and a High Jump Kick launches fucking dirty clothes all over the place. The cycle was not even finished, and Hollessy is over here making shit happen. So, we take the Salt Cure damage. But the real damage has been done because Halucha is an absolute beast and now the last Pokemon is going to be the King Gambit. Uh, so of course we do have to be worried about the Sucker Punch with Supreme Overlord. This thing gets the boost and even though I resist it, it is going to be able to kill. But I just have the Roost. So I'm just going to definitely go for the Roost just to be like, hey, Halucha does not give a shit about no Sucker Punch. He does go for it as the safest option there. And the Roost is going to put me in pretty safe range. Now the Salt Cure does bring me down quite a bit and I'm still thinking I might be able... Uh, to take a sucker punch but it's gonna be close the damage calculation that does around 50 percent to me so i decided to just go for the high jump kick here he does end up sucker punching and halucha lives it because like i said there has never been a more clutch pokemon than this specific halucha so i go for the high jump kick luckily do not miss and down goes the, the the older brother of the bisharp we saw so that ladies and gentlemen is going to be the end of the match and that was an extremely fun one it, a well-played halucha there's not much you can do. He didn't even need to use his unburden ability like it's supposed to, but sometimes you got to adapt and you overcome as long as you got the freaking Mexican wrestler guy on your squad. So thank you guys very much for watching. I do really appreciate all the support on these videos. You guys are amazing. You're especially amazing if you made it this deep into the video. And if you did, go ahead and comment Roost.